Welcome everyone. We are in a beautiful Scottish restaurant here in Glasgow and I food. At the end of the video I'll tell you exactly where I am so you'll know if it's any good. Scottish fare, which is this beautiful Scottish cheese with some fresh carrots and hopefully cell phone reception will last here. Uh, almost kind of Scottish drink or British drink. It's a mixture of gin with nettle syrup, which is something commonly used for tea here in Britain. Um, classic Scottish cuisine, done a little bit newer style, but we're having one traditional dish, which is the haggis. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist. Let me know where you're watching from. And this is the beautiful restaurant that I'm at. So as I usually do in every, uh oh, sorry, I'm not using my gimbal here. Um, as I do in every um, live video about food, if the food is good, then I'll tell you exactly where I'm at. If, I, if it's not, then Polly won't tell you. <laughs> so let's try it out. Here is a kind of a carrots mixed with a traditional Scottish cheese and a cocktail. First, let me try the cocktail. I already had a few sips. Ooh, it's so good. I did not expect this to be really good. It's called, I think, a ramble and a blether. Uh, I think so. Which both means kind of like someone who's talking on and on and on and on. It's really good. The nettle syrup has a little bit of a tea taste to it. And then uh, the gin, ooh, the gin just speaks so well. So well. Diane says, enjoy your haggis. I will be trying haggis very soon. So stay tuned, but let's try this out. Let's try the carrots. I'm so, so excited to try some fresh carrots, Scottish carrots, and some Scottish cheese. Ooh, the cheese is very melted, very soft cheese. A traditional Scottish cheese called a uh, uh, Kausher, something like that. Very, actually I should have taken a photo of the menu. Very difficult to pronounce. Let's try this out. Mmm. Wow. It's very good. It's, um, the carrots are just so soft and so well uh, roasted. Ooh, super soft carrots. I can barely taste the cheese though. They put just a little bit of cheese here. Let's see if I can get, get grab a little bit on its own. Let's try this out. Mmm. That's a very good cheese. That's a very bright flavor to it. Might be a little bit of the pesto that they put on here, but that's a very bright flavor to it. Really good cheese. And I love the also the, the pickles. I think this is pickled turnip, maybe, that they added as well. Mmm, very good. So the haggis is coming up next. And I'll get be getting dessert as well. So join me. Have I tried any uh, Scottish whiskeys? Asked Nicole. No, not yet. I've not tried any Scottish whiskeys yet, but I will at some point in this adventure. Uh, maybe tonight. Maybe they have a good whiskey list. Maybe I'll try a wee dram of whiskey, as the Scots like to say. And Nicole, thank you so much for becoming a mega urbanist. Nicole, is, welcome everyone, Nicole, to becoming the new mega urbanist. Nicole has been watching for a very long time. Thank you so much for getting yourself into the Urbanist Postcard Club. So here it is. Look at that. Let me know if you're able to hear me and see me fine. There's a... In the city, it's a little bit tough to live stream indoors. Luckily, they have Wi-Fi, and hopefully the Wi-Fi works a little bit. So look at that. Yeah, very good. You know, a little bit of pesto as well. So it has a little bit of kind of freshness to it. And Wendy, you're hungry. I love the look of the restaurant. It's just so beautiful. They have like a bar next door in the second little floor. You hear me and see me well? Okay, perfect. That's awesome to hear. All right. Mm. It's 
Doreen says, what is haggis? You'll find out soon. I'll tell you exactly what it is when it pops up, when I end up getting it. Um, it's, that's the, going to be the main course. So I love, love, love carrots. They are so soft. Carrots is one of my favorite things to eat. It's great for improving eyesight. They're ready for three eyesight tests in a row. I have improved my eyesight every single time. The first time that happened, the, the optometrist was like, wait a minute, this barely happens. It does happen, but it's very rare. Uh, so eat your carrots, ladies and gentlemen, especially if you're a glass. You'll have perfect 2020 eyesight. Mm. I love the little bit of crunch that they did. They put some kind of seeds here as well. Adds a little bit of a nice crunch to it. Than one cocktail. Well, I might have a wee dram of whiskey. Might as well. This looks like a nice place with a nice whiskey list, so maybe I'll try one. Let me know what's a good Scottish whiskey. And Kay says it doesn't do anything for my eyesight. <laughs> Eat more, Kay. Triple it. <laughs> So feel free to ask me literally anything you would like. I'm here for all of you. No matter how talkative I am, I do run out of things to say. So feel free to ask me literally anything. Well, you can turn orange if you eat too many carrots, says uh, Susie. Indeed. That's why sometimes I look like I have a tan uh, when I don't. I used to also eat a whole lot of sweet potato. Kind of stopped, but I used to like eat sweet potato on a regular basis. And my friends would comment to me, and this was in the middle of the winter in New York City. They would say, wow, like, Ariel, did you go to the beach? You're so tan. And I'd be like, no, I didn't go to the beach. But I knew. I knew why I looked so tanned. I was eating the copious amounts of sweet potato and carrots. Uh, William says, try a Glen, Glen Morgany. Glen Morgany. Sorry for the pronunciation. Lovely malt. Okay. I like... Flavorful. So give me recommendations that are with flavor, not too strong to kind of more for partying with friends. I don't want that type of whiskey. And I don't want a whiskey that's too light. Let me know with something very flavorful. This cheese is very nice, it's very light. So good. Jackie says, how's the haggis? Not yet. I'm eating the appetizer right now. We're at the appetizer phase right now. Ooh, but this appetizer is so good. Mm. Wendy says, just curious, is your entire trip planned out as far as has accommodations? In this particular case, right now, in the UK, yes. Do I announce where I'm going? No. Uh, partly, one reason is because I like having flexibility. I, I tend to book accommodations where I can change it at any moment's notice or cancel it without any penalty. So I do that. Uh, and there's certain places where you can do that more easily. Second reason is privacy. I just want to be able to live stream in, in peace. So, yeah, in this case I did plan ahead. Um, not always the case. In Italy I didn't. Because Italy is so much easier and cheaper to travel around. Here, not so much the case. Here is much more expensive. So if I wait for trains and I wait for lodging, I might be spending twice more than I would need to if I plan a month ahead. I only planned a little bit less than a month, like three weeks ahead, so it wasn't that much. Ron says, what's your first impressions of Scotland? I love it. Scotland is amazing. I love that it's slightly friendlier than England, definitely. 
and Scotland has a little bit more of a nicer atmosphere. People here are a little bit more friendly, a little bit nicer. So yeah, well, let's wait for the people to move. Wow. One of the women was drinking very heavily. And I've already seen that a few times. Oh, uh, like groups of women. There's always like a, a, either a birthday party or some type of hen night. And you always, I have seen one in every friend group that I pass by. Very, very drunk. B. Chris says uh, definitely friendlier than English. Yeah, because in, at least in London, uh, London, I went to London Bath and uh, Salisbury. And that's it. Three cities. Those three cities um, were more polite. There was a lot of politeness, but not friendliness. Well, friendly, but like a lower level. Uh, here, it's a bit more friendly. Susu Su Su says, sorry, I catch you late uh, for the haggis meal. No, no, you caught me right on time. I haven't had haggis yet. I'm still eating my appetizer. Uh, still... Uh, the lady behind me seeing him said, I think, I think she had a little bit too much to drink. Right here, I still have the appetizer. Susie says, Susie from, from Edinburgh says, be careful with the whiskey you choose. It might be very expensive. Thank you so much. I'll look at the price list before I choose one. Thank you so much for letting me know. I'll ask for the menu before I actually commit to a, a wee dram of whiskey. Randy says, I did a, a food tour of, of Glasgow before and I loved it. Glasgow is an amazing city. So first impressions of Scotland, as I mentioned, the people are a little bit more friendly. The sense of humor is a little bit more um, bigger, a little bit more upfront, a little bit more open. Because English humor is a bit more dry, a little bit closer, a little bit more, um, yeah, dry. Sardonic is a good word for English humor. But when it comes to Scottish humor, it's a little bit more similar to, to Irish humor. Irish humor is probably the most explosive kind of in-your-face humor. So not as much as the Irish, but more... If you were to make a spectrum between English dry humor and Irish explosive kind of slagging in-your-face humor, the Scots are kind of in the middle. Send us pictures of your lord, of your lard, <laughs> says us, Terry. Yeah, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a official, officially a lord. Um, Don says, like, Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean is, is more English humor. I'm not sure if the Welsh have a different humor. I wish I could explore more of Wales. Maybe I'll get a chance to see a little bit of Wales in my trip. Stay tuned. There's so much more to UK because... Even within England, there is Cornwall, and Cornwall has its own kind of distinct culture as well. So I would love to visit Cornwall, for example. And uh, Northern England as well has its own distinct culture. I tried haggis with neeps and tatties. Yes, that's what I'm going to have, Debbie. I'm uh, having with, with uh, whiskey sauce. Hey, George. Hello, Espiels. Nice to see you here. Watch Kevin, watch Kevin Bridges for a great Glaswegian comedian. Thank you. Uh, or Billy Colony. I will check out Billy Colony. Thank you so much. Hey, Nikki, nice to see you here. So pro tip, if you're in Scotland and want to go to a very kind of well-known restaurant, make reservations. Um, because I tried to go to the tea room earlier today, uh, did not make reservations. It would have been an hour wait. Here in this country, uh, it's not like Italy, where they're hard ass 
about uh, reservations. So in Italy, you gotta be careful because if you don't make reservations, they'll just tell you straight no and just shoo you away, basically. <laughs> but uh, here, they're not so hard ass. But if you wanna guarantee your chances of getting a table, make a reservation. It's not so much like the US, where usually in the US you can just walk in. If you have BBC iPlayer in your accommodation, uh, you can watch Still Game. Yes, it was recommended to me by Gary and uh, Sharon. Thank you so much for the recommendation as well. Still Game. I'll catch, I'll catch a few clips. Did you get your haggis? I'm waiting. I already have my appetizer. Really good appetizer. And there will be some dessert featured as well. And maybe a wee dram of whiskey. Hey, Emily, nice to see you here. Will you be visiting the Battle of Culloden? I think I passed it on my Highland trip. One of the sites I visited had some, something related to the Battle, Battle of Culloden, uh, but I'm not entirely sure. I'll be going there. Haggis is great with scallops, says Lauren. Really? Scallops, like the seafood, interesting. Is there one, is there one type of haggis or many kinds? Great question, Adam. Many different types of haggis. So haggis, if people don't know, it's made in sheep's stomach and they stuff it with uh, a variety of different organs of lamb, goat. Goat might be rare, but lamb is usually the top three. And they use lungs, they use livers, they use hearts, they use regular steak parts, all the parts. It depends. Uh, heart and liver says be, uh, be Chris. So yeah, it might be heart and liver might be the, the most common one. I, I think lungs is also fairly common as well. Uh, now, if you're kind of cringe at it, remember a lot of sausages and salamis you have are also made the same way. So haggis isn't really that crazy when you already had a sausage, a salami, a pepperoni, uh, a hot dog, a bratwurst, etc. A black pudding, a morcilla if you're Puerto Rican, which is blood sausage as well. Not that crazy. It's here. The haggis is here. I got, so you can choose two portions. I end up getting the smaller portion because I want to save space. But this looks good. Oh. Mmm. Do you want to see it? I just, right there, then and then, it looked like I just snorted Coke. No, what I did is just snort some haggis. That's what I did. There we go. Yeah, some snorts, snorting some haggis. <laughs> Susie says it's difficult to catch haggis. Haggis is a very, very elusive creature. So there's, there seems to be some type of inside joke or maybe uh, it's Scots making fun of tourists. Uh, they say that the haggis is very hard to catch. Of course, of course haggis is not actual animal. Uh, haggis <laughs> is, is, as I said, lamb, pork, or, or cow. It might have other things. It might have venison, it might have uh, goat. Uh, is mega supporter only done if you're on multiple social platforms? No, yes, uh, Virginia, if you are a, a supporter on Facebook, YouTube, and Patreon at $5 a month, that's the cheat code. If you want to support for a little bit less as a mega supporter, do let me know. I don't, I don't have the list uh, immediately. So do let me know and do, send, do let me know what's your YouTube username and your uh, Facebook name. And then I can confirm that you are a mega urbanist via the three support method. So you can become a mega urbanist $20 a month on patreon.com slash urbanist, YouTube, pressing that join button, or being a super urbanist on all three platforms at the same time, concurrently. Let's go. Nappies and tatties. Wait, wait. Haggis, nappies, and tatties. There we go. So haggis, as I mentioned, mixture of different organs <laughs> from a different mixture of animals. 
uh, nappies, which is uh, mashed turnips. I'm really excited for that. I really love turnips. Sorry, neeps. Uh oh. I'm so sorry. I said nappies. Uh, my, that might be a very bad word. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I mean, no offense uh, to to uh, to people who who uh, have features that relate to that word. Uh, neeps, neeps, neeps. And we have mashed potatoes, basically, and we got the nice whiskey sauce. I'm gonna save the whiskey sauce and pour it a little bit later. Let me just try each separately. Thank God I'm not super famous yet, because if I were, then, um, <laughs> then I just might be canceled for saying the name incorrectly. Someone might really misinterpret it. All right, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try from least flavorful to most flavorful. So let's try the, the, the tatties. Try it out. Ooh, those are some very good mashed potatoes. Wow. Oh my God. Really good mash. Has a little bit of spicy kick to it. I think they put some spiciness to it. I'm not sure what, I don't see black pepper in here, so maybe white pepper or something like that. Uh, so a little bit of spiciness. Wow. Ooh. Very fresh also. I know, I can tell that it's not powdered. All right. Here's the neeps. Right? That's how I say it? Neep? Neeps? Neeps, okay, neeps. Let's try the neeps. Ooh. Oh, neeps is interesting. You definitely get a strong turnip taste to it, of course, because they're turnips. Turnips has a um, Let's see. Has it tastes more akin to cassava? If you ever had yuca, if you ever had mashed yuca, if you're Latin American, uh, cualquier persona que está mirando en español también puede, puede, puedes preguntarme cualquier cosa. Esto sabe un poco como yuca. This tastes a little bit like yuca slash cassava. Um, has also a little bit of taste like taro. If you're Filipino, yeah, a little bit like taro. Uh, and now let's try the haggis. Oh, this haggis. Oh, you got, you got, we got to do a close up on this haggis. Why are you drinking sake? Uh, says uh, Kurihara. Kurihara, nice to see you here. This is not sake. This is a cocktail made with gin and nettle syrup, which is a very British kind of tea ingredient. All right, I got to do a close up on this haggis. We got to get uncomfortably close. With Asfiel says, does someone me uh, mention vegetarian haggis? This specific spa place does vegetarian haggis. I eat vegetarian haggis in the morning, which was very interesting. All right, everyone, look at that. Oh, there we go. Haggis, uncomfortably close. Look at that. Ooh, there we go. Is yuca like sweet potato? Yeah, this tastes like sweet potato. Well, kind of. This tastes, tastes like yams. I think this is more closer to yams than sweet potato. Jenna says, uh, nappies is an English term for diapers. Oh, thank, thank God. Because if you remove one word, one letter from that uh, term in America, it's something very offensive. Okay, so let's try this out. Wow, that's so good. Oh my God. It kind of tastes like corned beef. Mm. A little bit like corned beef. It has almost the same texture as corned beef, but it tastes like a little bit fresher than corned beef would. It's corned beef, but you don't know. It's usually served, it's, it's from a can. It's 
pork shoulder. This has a little bit of a fresher taste. It's very deep, deep flavor. I don't think they use, this is very low in liver. So you don't get that livery taste. If you don't know how liver tastes like, it almost tastes like cleaning fluid sometimes. This is how I interpret liver. I don't like it too much if I have like a plate of liver. So I think this is low on liver. It is creamy, so I think they have lungs in here. Mm. Almost tastes like a morcilla, which is a Puerto Rican blood sausage. Or it tastes like a black pudding. So it's a very similar taste profile to a black pudding. A little bit of a spicy kick to here, so they use a very unique uh, blend of spices. I can taste maybe a little bit of nutmeg, so it has a very kind of spicy kick to it. Mm. Wow! Mm. My taste buds are singing. This is so good. Wow. How, do, how are Americans afraid of eating this? This is um, madness, ladies and gentlemen. How, how are people afraid of eating this? This is like the best thing ever. So good. All right, let's put that whiskey sauce now. Wow. All right, I'm gonna drink a little bit. Where did I put the whiskey sauce? On it? And the turnips, there we go. Maybe a little bit here. All right. Let's try it out. Make into a Sloppy Joe sandwich, that's Susie. Yeah, you can, and it'll taste like a very good Sloppy Joe, in my opinion. Uh, this could be made into a very good sandwich. I'm Scottish and I wouldn't eat it, says Nikki. Oh, I don't know how. I'm not afraid of eating, eating it, says uh, S. Fields. I choose not to. <laughs> Touche. Uh, Stephanie says, did you mention that haggis is illegal in the U.S.? Haggis is illegal to import into the U.S. So you can't bring Scottish haggis into the U.S. due to uh, the U.S. illegalizing the import of lungs. Cooked, it could be cooked or uncooked lungs to the U.S. Uh, the reason you can't bring lungs is because the U.S. believed back in the 1970s, 1960s that it transmitted uh, tuberculosis. But the Scots have been eating haggis for centuries and no one has gotten tuberculosis from eating haggis. So yeah, there we go. Uh, but you can make haggis within the U.S. if you buy American cow lungs or American pork lungs. But I don't think it's that easy to buy lungs. Because I don't think it's, there's that much of a market for it, but I might be wrong. Mm. This is so good. Um. All mixed together, wow. So good. The presentation is lovely, says uh, Janice. I agree. I'm really enjoying this. I did not think I would enjoy this. It sounds weird, but I am in love. Queen Bee says I have to pass. Fair enough. Fair enough. More for me. Maria says this is spicy. It is. It is spicy. They made it spicy here. That's why I'm getting a little bit red. It is spicy. I'm going to put more whiskey sauce. Pour all the whiskey sauce. Right. 
Your skin looks flawless, says Dolores. Thank you so much, Dolores. I appreciate that. Irene says, lungs transmit other diseases. Well, I assume actual lungs, but I'm not sure if you cook them. I don't think so. Wow. I gotta admit, this is one of the better meals I've had in the UK. These potatoes and neeps are cooked to perfection. What's in the whiskey sauce? I assume whiskey, I assume some type of cream. Yeah, whiskey and cream, I think. I think that's the combination. Maybe some types of herbs. All right, everyone, so lots of popular music playing here. So thanks to everyone who's been leaving Super Chats, like B. Chris right now, says thanks for coming to my home country. My, my pleasure. We're just having good time and feeling all right. Thank you so much for the Super Chat. If you want to lend your support to a broadcast like this, because in the restaurant here is popular music playing, I can't monetize these videos afterwards. Um, I will show you kind of a real restaurant eating experience rather than restaurant, having everything muted, everything being empty. Those are fun sometimes, but I'll show you also fun restaurant experiences. So feel free to become a Patreon, and that way I can continue making these shows for free for people who can't become a patron. Uh, so thank you to all the patrons for supporting this. And people are saying already good night. Uh, it's, a, it's a wee commercial break. Question, why does the uh, Scottish flag appear black in my chat? I'm not entirely sure. It might be a different, uh, because different phones might have different emojis. This food also brings a lot of childhood memories because in Puerto Rico, we would have mashed potatoes, um, like a ground beef. And that usually would be mixed together, or carne manchada, which is kind of a stewed pork or stewed cow meat. And it's really good combination. And this reminds me a lot of my childhood right now. Also in America, we have a lot of mashed potatoes too. So, haggis also tastes a lot like ground beef. Could you um, tell if the lungs enjoyed a pack a day? No, I don't think so, Ron. They, they lived a good life, a good clean life, breathing clean Scottish air. Whoever these lungs belong to, whichever animal they belong to. I have a few more bites. Can uh, enjoy every last. What do they do with the carcass? Ooh, Adam, I don't know. I don't, I, you know. I imagine that if you were to look at a butchery, which I never done a video from a butchery, but I imagine it would um, kind of change your perspective when you eat. Some people might not affect too much. Some people might kind of be turned off from uh, eating these type of meats. Francisco says, uh, enjoy your meal. Thank you so much, Francesco. As for second, says Susie. You know, they had a larger portion. They had, luckily, two portions. But this is enough. This type of food, since it's so creamy, everything's so creamy, I think don't go for the larger portion. It might be too much cream, too much creaminess. Go for the medium portion or the smaller portion. Because, um, yeah, you can, I think, of soft texture. Wow. Plate is done. There we go. Oh. That was so good. Mm. 
don't have waste study, says uh, Gary. Lick so Gary, I know that m in most places in the Western world, licking the plate is very looked down upon. Yeah, all finished, yeah. Can I have the whiskey menu and the um, dessert menu as well? Thank you so much. So Gary says, uh, lick the plate clean. So most places in the Western world, because I haven't really been too much to the East, it's very looked down upon to lick the plate clean. Let me know if Skull is any different. I know that it's not no good uh, in England, no good in, in New York. Italy, don't do not do that. Any scarpetta? No, because you can order a side of bread, but bread is not really typical to kind of have automatically with your meal like it is in Italy or like it is in uh, Italian-American cuisine or different parts of the U.S. You generally have to order it uh, from what I've seen thus far, and it's extra. But I've noticed good bread here. They have like good uh, sourdough bread uh, at a lot of places here in Scotland and in England. I've been very g genuinely surprised by the bread quality. So that's nice. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. All right, so I'm going to show you a menu. Wow. Spice squash sorbet, cinnamon sponge, scorch moraine, and pumpkin pie baked Alaska. That's like New York meets Scotland. That's so interesting. Big the Alaska was invented in Delmonico's in New York City. This is the menu. Dessert to tell you if it's really worth coming here. I end up getting the haggis, neeps, and tatties, the smaller portion. And these are the prices. Fairly expensive. So we're. Maybe a little bit cheaper than New York. And let me show you the whiskey list. So let me know what whiskey is good. So we got the single malts from the Highlands. The prices look okay. The most expensive one is like extremely rare right here. Yeah, spy side, we can get islands, we can get lowlands. It's late, let me know if anyone has any recommendations. Something with the L, I think. Do let me know. Oh, Glen Morgie, that was the one that you recommended earlier. Okay, because let me know if a few other people have recommended it. So B says Glen Morgan, let me know if anyone else agrees or disagrees. Glen Morgan 10, I'm gonna get. Yeah. I think the Glen Morgan 18 might be pushing it. Sharon, thank you so much for the 310 stars. Is Glenvit here? Glenvit is in here, Glen Fittich is here. Uh, Boston D also says Glen Morgan. Cool. Do let me know how to pronounce it. I think it's Glen Morgan. Glen Morangi. Glen Morangi. Yeah. Yeah. Susie also recommends Glen Morangi. Okay. Okay. 
Awesome, you found it. I have the Glamorgi uh, 10. How do I pronounce it? Uh, Glamorangi, good. Glamorangi, okay, okay. And then I'll have the uh, pumpkin pie bake of the last guy. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, uh, I didn't serve you before they have a food allergy. Any food allergies? No, no, no food allergies. Food allergies. Okay. Thank you. Brittany says, uh, Glenn Morangy. Glenn Morangy. Glenn Morangy. Cool, thank you so much, Susie. Uh, love a good Scottish whiskey. Yeah, Baked Alaska says Lee. Uh, L L L Lee. Uh, Lee. Baked Alaska. What's Baked Alaska? Baked Alaska is basically fried ice cream. Uh, in New York City. So it's fascinating that we're having a, a classic New York City dish in Scotland. Uh, they have a lot of Scottish ingredients on it. Uh, so Baked Alaska isn't associated with New York uh, as like, not commonly, people associate with just America in general, but it was invented in New York. I didn't realize baked Alaskas were in Scotland. Yeah, in, uh, here. I actually never. F I, don't, I don't. I might have featured. I featured baked Alaska only once on a Facebook Live video, like four or five years ago, uh, and it was really good. It was like a, in a duck restaurant in Midtown Manhattan. Shaken or stirred? I'm not sure how they're going to serve the whiskey. Let's see. I'm not sure how they're going to serve it. Who knows? I'm letting it in their hands. How to fry an ice cream? Is it going to melt? Adam, that's a good question. I really don't know. If anyone knows how baked Alaska is made, do let us know. Virginia says, oh, I'm not tech savvy, not multiple social media, maybe only one dozen. Okay, so if, yeah, if you're not watching on YouTube, to become a mega urbanist, you have to go strictly to patreon.com slash urbanist. There's no mega, mega er, sorry, there's no mega urbanist option on Facebook. Uh, it's only on Patreon or on YouTube. So go to uh, patreon.com slash urbanist. There you'll choose the mega urbanist option. This is the only way. We're feeling full up just watching you. All looks delicious as Susie. Yeah, yeah, this is a very good restaurant. I am so excited to tell you where this is. Labor intensive, I made it and took all day, says Susan. Oh, wow, Susan, it took all day. Yeah, I can imagine, uh, it took all day. Gary says, uh, where's Wendy? <laughs> She's shooting up the A1 on her Aston Martin, most likely. Someone said, uh, someone said earlier, I think it was Nick, says your uncle's behind me. Cool. Glad your uncle, uh, glad your uncle's is also in the restaurant. You use a torch to cook on the outside. Interesting. Baked Alaska is covered with a meringue top. All right, Jason, thank you so much. You know, I actually have never been to Delmonico's. I've shown the history from the outside, but I've actually never been inside. Jane says, always a neat, good whiskey. We'll, we'll see uh, how the whiskey is served. I, I assume you can ask any way you want to. I'm not sure how they're gonna so serve it by default. Straight whiskey, I think, right? Do let me know. I'm not an expert whiskey drinker by no means. I barely drink any liquor straight. I don't like it too much. Uh, but yeah, neat and straight, I think mean the same thing, which means uh, just the whiskey. A little bit of water. Let me know what's the name of that. You can have it on ice, which is whiskey on the And I think that's it. I think those are the only, two, the only three ways you can have it. Chris, just enjoying the live. Thank you so much for tuning in, Chris. Everyone, slam that like button right now. Add a little bit of water. Luckily, I have water with me. So I can serve it any way I want to. 
They should bring water on the side. All right, let's see. If of course, you have whiskey cocktails. So whiskey and Coke, Lorraine, right? Whiskey and Coke and on ice is typical. You have a lot of whiskey cocktails. No need for mixers with a good aged single malt. Ice cream, sponge cake, or pudding. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I finished. Yeah, thank you. Let me wait for a spoon. Thank you so much. Okay. We dram a whiskey. Uh, slip this one. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're having a good whiskey, it's like similar to Mexico and having a good tequila, you do not take it as a shot. It's not America. <laughs> You're not going to uh, a Dallas barbecue if you were in, in New York City. You're not going to cow. Uh, what's the name of the the restaurant, the cowboy restaurant in um, in East Village? I forgot the name right now, but yeah, you're not you're not going to those places. You're not taking a shot. Don't do that. I think that's uh, uh, borderline offensive. So I think it's a slow sip. Let's try it out. A wee dram of whiskey. Mmm, I smell whiskey. I'm getting notes of jet fuel. Ooh, I'm getting drunk just smelling it. Hints of gasoline. And a tad, a tad backside of diesel. Straight up. Wow. Hey, Lorraine, thank you so much for the stars. Oh my God. Woo. I swear I'm not tearing up because of the whiskey. I'm just getting emotional, ladies and gentlemen, because of the, it's such a beautiful country. It's just a beautiful country. This whiskey is not affecting me at all. It's just a wonderful, wonderful place. I'm so grateful to be here. Ooh. It's so strong, I can't stop sipping it. Stephanie says, puts hair on your chest. Yeah. I'm about to put on my kilt and go play the bagpipe in the, in the Highlands. Woo! What can I taste? Pure alcohol. That's why I can't. That's, that's lit up all my chakras. Yeah. Let me know. That's why the bad uh, service. Is, I, it, you know, UK cell phone reception is, is disappointing, to say the least. Uh, for for such a world power, so yeah, it's very disappointing. It's because I'm indoors, and even the Wi-Fi at most places is not does not suffice for live streaming either. So overall, it's very disappointing. But let's try it out. I'm not gonna move. Yeah, let's try it out. I'm gonna actually cut it up here in this perspective. We're all vicariously drunk, Ariel, no worries. <laughs> all right. Oh, ice cream in the middle. Look at that. BA says, I'm surprised Vodafone is usually good. Um, it's uh, for live streaming, different from using your phone. 
using your phone, usually you're just uh, downloading. Live streaming, you're also uploading. Let's try this out. Don't mind me. I've just been transport uh, transported. Listening to the sweet music, the sweet theme song of Outlander. I'm the guy in the kilt, the 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 the, the past husband in Outlander with her. That's that's how I feel right now. <laughs> but it's also New York as well. It's really good. Yeah, this is a classic like New York taste. Uh, love the meringue. The pumpkin is really good. Very strong pumpkin. Uh, I love the combination of hot and cold. Really nice combination. Combines really well. The sponge cake also is really, really, really spongy. Very moist. Moist like the air of Scotland. Also the sauce that they end up putting around it. Wow. Ron says, is the whiskey strong enough to make everyone look pretty? I think it could have that effect. Everyone is a bonnie lass after that whiskey. What flavor is ice cream? Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Lauren, great question. Everyone give a round of hearts to Lauren. Lauren is a Glaswegian. And she's giving me so many great recommendations. I didn't have the chance to try all of them, but she's giving me a lot of great recommendations of Glasgow. So thank you so much. And Lauren has been a viewer for nearly six years. And September is going to be a six year anniversary. So five plus years, Lauren has been a viewer of Urbanus. It's hot, cold at the same time. Yep. Hot because of the meringue and the uh, sponge cake is kind of uh, more loose. All three. Tepid, cold, hot. Delicious. With a little bit of weed jam and whiskey. Mm. I swear I'm not. I swear I'm not tearing up because. Beautiful moment. <laughs> Gary says, Lauren, a party anniversary. Glenmore, uh, Glenmore, uh, indeed has. Looking, looking like a true Scotsman with a very red face. As, uh, there's the Irish glow, let me know. Is there a term for the, for the Scottish version? Is there like a... <laughs> Let me know if there's a, a Scottish name for, for turning red while drinking. Susie says, we'll carry you home. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, Susie. So food of Scotland. Yes. I'm genuinely impressed by this food. Um, UK doesn't have quite the biggest variety of food, but it is homey. It is quite kind of... It makes you feel cozy. It's cozy food. 
and that's what I like about English food and now Scottish food. Both have that kind of cozy feeling to it. Really good. How do the Scots compare to the Irish? Uh, great question B, Chris. From my perspective, if you were to put, as I mentioned with the humor, Irish humor is very in your face, kind of slagging. Slagging means kind of making fun of you, but in a playful way. Um, more blunt. And then you have English, very dry humor, very sardonic. Straight-faced humor. You have that and kind of humor that is maybe a little tad awkward as well. In the middle, you have Scottish humor. It's not too English. It's not too too in your face. Kind of right there in the middle. After Scotland, I think. Uh, other than that, in terms of culture, more friendlier than the English, uh, from my scene. Still seeing politeness. So it's polite and a little bit more friendlier. Ireland, it's polite, but it's more a warm friendly. It's more kind of a camaraderie that you get in Ireland, an instant camaraderie. I've noticed less than Edinburghers. Edinburghers are a little bit more kind of similar to the English in terms of the politeness, in terms of the cordiality, cordiality. Making conversation is very easy. And making small talk is even easier. If you talk about the weather, that'll open doors that you'll never knew before. The weather to anyone. It's not like the US. The weather in the U talking about the weather in the US is kind of a means of of just um, politely making some conversation. But here, if you talk about the weather, it's a way of the Brit. Maybe the Scot, maybe the Welsh, maybe the English. That way you can really get to know them on the deep soul level. Or maybe it's the whiskey talking. This whiskey ain't getting lighter. Oh. If someone is a good chat, you would say you patter like water. You patter like water. Cool. Lauren, that's great to hear. We're having a nice cup in the blether. Or a glass in the blether. I never did like whiskey too strong. I'm still not a fan of drinking um, alcohol straight. Not really a fan, but I can see the lore. I can see the lore. Irene says, what do you say about the weather here? You can say anything. Just talk about the weather. How it was yesterday, how it was today, how it will be next week. How it was a year ago. How it was when you visited here decades ago. Anything, anything about the weather is a great way to, <laughs> to uh, engage with the, with the Brits. I, as I mentioned, more than the Americans. Valerie says the Scottish words for drinking is uh, bladderred, 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 bladderred? Let me know. So do you take the low road or the high road today, says so Stephanie? <laughs> I went right in the middle. The middle way. What's the alcohol content of whiskey? Great question. 40 to 60%. Depends on the whiskey. I think this is more like 40%. 40% ABV. Alright, I have a little bit left. I'm gonna put a little bit of wee, wee bit of water in here. Wee water. Just a little bit. Here we go. Now it's much better. 
it's a lot, a lot more palatable now with the water. Yeah. Susie says now it's time for coffee, mints, or or a tablet. What's a tablet? A mint. Uh, Ron says uh, S Fields is one year beyond mod. That's so cool. Marcin says let's go to a Michelin restaurant. I'm tempted. I would say that going to a Michelin restaurant in a country like Scotland is more of a splurge than a necessary experience. The reason I say that is because I think the beauty of Scottish food is it's in, in its hominess and its relatableness. So maybe go to a restaurant like this, which I'll tell you the name of and the location at the end for a little bit of a modern interpretation. Um, but I don't think a Michelin star really is necessary here. Um, I'm not sure if anyone's doing anything exceptional. I got to research. But I enjoy going to Michelin stars in countries like America, like in, in New York City, uh, because they do things that your typical restaurant really wouldn't do and they really go all their way to find the most rare ingredients. And there's very open room for experimentation. I'm not sure how much you can experiment with Scottish cuisine, uh, to be honest. It's like that Irish high-end restaurant I went to. It was fun, but the best part of that Irish high-end restaurant, people don't know, watch my Galway series. I went to a two Michelin star restaurant in Galway. I forgot the name right now. It's called, I think it was called Air or something like that. That restaurant, the best thing I had was the duck. And it was duck made like you would any type of duck. Duck is hard to cook, but I could have had that duck in a more regular high-end restaurant in Ireland and been as satisfied. Nothing really stuck out to me from that restaurant experience, unfortunately. It was good. Um, wine, but yeah, nothing stuck out to me, unfortunately. It was a good experience, but it didn't feel like it was super necessary. Thing might apply to a Scotland. Maybe a Michelin star might be more, more within London where they're probably experimenting with crazy stuff. Uh, Fishbon says, why am I getting 360p resolution? Because that's the highest resolution I can go live here. Very terrible service here. This is the best I can do. Our seafood in Scotland is amazing. That's great to hear. There's a restaurant right across the road also for seafood. What's the normal time for dinner? My feeling is it's about 6 to 7 p.m. Any Scots, let me know. I, I think it's about 6 to 7 p.m. I went with a friend in London to eat at like 9 p.m. And they were about to close. So... I've seen a lot of restaurants close pretty early. How is business end of things going for you, says Stephanie? <laughs> business end of things. <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> um, here, because of the issues with Wi-Fi kind of going live on the normal, normally, re uh, going live on a regular basis has been difficult. So, in terms of the business end of making videos, it does suffer in terms of live video. You know, I don't, I don't get as consistent super chats or stars. Sizing videos, getting views on the videos isn't so good because I've been only going live randomly because I have had terrible service in London. So yeah, business is is not the best <laughs> here. It was better when I can go live on a regular basis. But now I'm going live again on a regular basis, so hopefully I'll look up. Argentina, the dinner is about 10 to 11 p.m., yeah. You're looking good eating your pudding. Dinner is 6 to 7 p.m., says Susie. Thank you so much, Susie. 
9 p.m. is late in the UK. Yep, 9 p.m. is late in the UK. 9 p.m. is normal in Italy, Spain, not in the UK. Dinner is about 1800, which is 6 p.m. Yeah, 6 p.m. The kitchen on Leith Waterfront is a lovely Michelin star restaurant. Okay, thank you so much for the recommendation, B. Chris. Is BF Goodrich Star Restaurant? Oh, I don't uh, 360p only because of the service. Time to cash, cash in those Bitcoins. <laughs> Bitcoin is actually not doing too well, but hopefully it will do well in the, in the future. Go to the museums. One day might not be enough. I have that feeling. Glasgow seems like a city that you need a few times. There for other work besides YouTube? No. No, this trip I'm here fully for, for this, for Urbanist. No, I'm not doing any other work here. Have you met a with great chefs? I don't think I've ever interviewed a, oh, I've only managed to interview one famous chef, but it was only for like a minute, two minutes. Uh, Emerald, Lug no, that was not Emerald Lagasse. I forgot the name of the guy. He's another famous Italian chef, Italian American chef. I forgot his name, I don't know. All right, everyone, I'm gonna have a, one more bite. Let me know if you have any last one. Everyone for tuning in. Again, if you enjoy these videos and wanna see more, City exploration, restaurant exploration, food exploration. Become a patron.com slash urbanist. Bonus footage there for for patrons. Mega Urbanist, twenty dollars or more. If you want to become a mega urbanist by today, you'll get one postcard from Scotland. But you gotta do it by tonight. Otherwise, March will be the next time for postcards. There'll be a, a philosophical chat. Probably next week, I'll just tell you the time because it's the first Friday. We'll be doing another eight hour video editing work. No, Ron, I'm not doing editing work at the moment. Uh, Stephanie asked, were you expecting extreme weather? I would say this weather is extreme. Pretty much in line with what I was expecting. I'm grateful that's less rainy than Ireland. Ireland is magical in the rain. Uh, but I'm grateful that here's a little bit more sunny days. I was, I was, I wanted to see snow in Scotland, so I'm glad I saw snow in Scotland. Be Chris says, how long you're in Scotland? You gotta find out. Tomorrow is another scheduled live stream, so stay tuned. 3 p.m. Now for my shot of vodka. Good chaser to them. We dram a whiskey. BA says, enjoy, enjoy your dessert and whiskey. Don't fall asleep on the train, <laughs> says Susie. <laughs> Indeed. Don't fall asleep on the train and end up in Newcastle, says Gary. I'll do my best. Otherwise, uh, I, I'll. Charlie Hunnam. We don't know who Charlie Hunnam is, it's a famous actor from Newcastle. Braveheart was from Scotland. It was indeed, James, yeah. Not very historically accurate, but this take place in Scotland. Thank you so much. Mario Botali was the guy I interviewed for like two minutes on the live video. The ambience in the, in the restaurant seems warm and, and acoustic. Yes. Okay, everyone. So let me tell you the name of the restaurant. The location is in Glasgow. It is by the... It is near the, the subway stop. I took the subway and I post a short video on it. Nearby one of the subway stops. Of the place. Stravagan. Uh, Stravagan. Right there. Stravagan. Beautiful area. Which I think is in uh, West Glasgow. And one more time, the, the views of the restaurant. Beautiful ambiance. Do recommend it. Check it out. Stravagant in Glasgow. 
one more time, extravagant. And I'll tell you the price. In the comments afterwards, I'll tell you exactly how much I paid. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in from Stravgan in Glasgow. I do highly recommend this restaurant if you're in Glasgow. Great, great place. Lauren says it's on Gibson Street. Thank you so much. Uh, Stravagan, really, uh, and really great haggis. And I love all the inventive flavors. See you another place in the UK. Who knows where? Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. I'll say goodbye in Gallic.